Nightcore EC22. I think this is the first Nightcore light that I've reviewed, and this one is interesting because it has pretty much the simplest user face in the history of user interfaces, unless there was a light that had like the way old school ones, like when I was a kid, that had one button push on to one brightness, turn it off. This one past that is almost as simple as you can get past that. And I'll get back to that in a bit. But here's the box. Here's the giveaway on that. It's got a rotary dial. But some basics about it. EC22 has the Cree XPL HD V6 LED. Puts out maximum of 1000 lumens and runs on either 118650 or 2CR123s or RCR123s. Some basics on the back, some stuff that I've already mentioned. Has that rotary dial. There's the LED, 1000 uh, thousand lumen output. We'll throw a maximum of 185 meters. The low on it is half lumen, so half lumen up to 1000 lumens. It's IPX8 rated, so it's impact resistant. You can submerge it and all good basic stuff there. Uses on this light, because of the user interface, it's pretty much anything but tactical. Although, could you use this in a self-defense light sort of way? If you're caught somewhere and you wanted to blind someone, you go, hey, and there you're on to full brightness. So you could to some degree, but not really for building search. But otherwise, for anything past that, hiking, outdoor stuff, general all around at home use, searching, pretty much anything but a pure tactical mode. So very versatile light. Stuff that comes with it, it comes with a lanyard, an instruction manual, two spare O-rings, and the pocket clip, which doesn't come on the light, but you can put it on there. The lanyards go in the hole, or the lanyard, goes in the holes back here, and those are almost big enough that you could probably fit some thin paracord through there if you wanted. Get these out of the way, and let's have a look. So let's look at the, the construction of it here on the back. As I mentioned, because of that rotary dial, there's nothing on the back. It's just a flat back there, so you obviously can tail stand it if you're so inclined. The tail cap comes off. There's an O-ring to help with that water rating. The threads are squared off, so they're going to be Pretty tough there. And then on the inside, came with a night core battery. You can get it with a couple different batteries. Price on this ranges from 49 to 59 on Amazon, and part of that depends on which battery you get it with. So night core has a couple different sizes and batteries. This is the 2300 milliamp hour. I think they also have a 3500 one. So a couple options there. And then battery goes in there. Screw that back on. Forward to that, the pocket clip. You can take the pocket clip off and you can either mount the pocket clip facing this way or facing back this way if you wanted to put this on your hat or if you wanted to carry it up in your pocket for whatever reason depending on, on how you prefer. And it's a reasonably deep, deep carry pocket clip so there'll be a little bit sticking out of, the, out of your uh, pocket here. If you put it the other way there's going to be probably this much of it sticking out of your pocket so it just kind of depends on how you want to use it or take it off all the way. The pocket clip it has I think reasonable tension, not super tight, not super loose and should not have too many underclip issues because it's not really that rough under there. There is some light knurling here, pretty standard on the, uh, the hard type 3 anodized aluminum. Again, kind of standard for flashlights. You can move the pocket clip around. If I had to nitpick something here, there are these two indentations in the side of the body here, one on each side. And just from an OCD perspective, it would be nice if they lined up with the rotary dial. Not a, really that big of a deal for me, but would be kind of a nice thing. For me, I line the pocket clip up with the dial. That way, if I, in the dark, if I find the clip, I know I can just move forward to the dial. Forward of that, there is a, little, a ring here with some anti-roll, so it won't go, but if you have the pocket clip on it anyway, not going to roll, not a problem. Bit of a heat sink there, and then the head, hot warning there, but it does start getting warm on that thousand lumen output. There's some crenellations here, and then down in there, the reflector, it's a smooth reflector. It's really not very deep. And then that LED down in there, and you can see kind of interesting on this light, there's a little bit of space around the LED before the reflector starts. I'm not sure how much of a difference that makes in the output of the light, or in the th I'm not really in the throw, but just in the, the beam pattern compared to if it was a full, full reflector all the way down to the LED. I think it probably doesn't make a ton because on the full brightness, you can't see that. So it's probably not a big deal. There is anti-reflective coated glass here, and I think that is about it for the construction. So now that user interface. The user interface is just this rotary dial, and that's it. There's, we'll do half a lumen up to 1,000 lumens and relatively anything in between. It turns on, there's a small detent with just a little click there. 
just a little click, comes onto that half lumen. And then from there, you just rotate it up and it will go up to that thousand lumens. I was nervous when I first saw this before I actually used it, that I was gonna have to spin this dial for a while to get from that half lumen all the way up to the thousand. I was gonna be rotating, rotating, but really, so the half lumen and full output. So it's really just one movement of your thumb like that or however you're going to be doing it, but it really doesn't take very much. And so you can very easily go anything in between there. If your hands were slippery, maybe it would slip a little bit on this. I don't think it's that big of a deal. It looks like there's a button there in the middle. That's not a button. I think that's just the housing for the, the center of the dial. Maybe this could be rubberized if they wanted to make it a little bit more grippy, but so far I've not had a problem with it. So again, simplest user interface ever. Half lumen and then dial a bright all the way up to 1000 lumens. Run times, it will do that 1000 lumens for one hour and that half lumen for 500 hours. I'm not sure which battery they measured that with, but those are their run times. I'm assuming they measured it with the bigger battery, maybe that 3,500 milliamp hour one, but still a good amount of run time, 1,000 lumens for an hour is plenty of time, and usually you don't need quite that much output anyway. All right, having a look at the brightnesses out here in the dark, starting with that half lumen, which is a lot brighter than people would give it credit for, a lot more useful than people would give it credit for. And then from there, you can ramp up to that full brightness and you can see the beam profile there. It is relatively floody with a decent hot spot there. Reasonable hot spot looking down the way. Got the sprinkler on and good amount of throw. You can see way over there. So 1,000 lumens, it does start to get a little warm after a while. And realistically, probably half that i mean it's plenty for for most situations that you would need but if you need it you can go from off to full brightness in you know almost instantaneously off full bright and back down so really versatile with the user interface i really like the light it does start getting warm after you've had it on for a while especially with your hand up there near the tip it starts getting a little bit warm so careful with that depending on the brightness maybe you start holding it back farther but the head does get a bit warm without those higher outputs. So something to note there. But otherwise, it is a really interesting light. I really like how simple the user interface is. Nice one from Nightcore. Check out this one, the EC-22.